Testing. Can you hear me? Okay, seems fine. So, as I said before, with the um, channel, I'm going to try some new things out. So I thought I'd do a little um, soundbite or a podcast, if you will, just talking about some horror news and things in general. Um, one of the things I'm going to be covering heavily on this um, edition is the trailer that's just been revealed for the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre game, which looks utterly fantastic. I'm not sure what the game involves off first hand I'm not sure what it involves um, but I'm looking forward to playing it obviously um, apparently it's got a 2023 release date so it's not out till next year not sure what month that'll be maybe at the beginning of the year hopefully we can get our hands on it but I suppose another game that's just been released is The Quarry which I've actually just ordered I haven't played it I'm a little bit late on that one but looking forward to that too so I suppose we can play games like Evil Dead the game and The Quarry if you know if you're a horror fan you've got those to tide you over until the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game is released but the trailer looks great I mean there was a teaser trailer earlier this year but the new trailer it, it looks really authentic and true to the film one thing I was wondering though, that's why I was in a bit of a kerfuffle at the beginning. Silly dogs. Goddamn dogs. Never mind. I'll talk over them. So what I was wondering is what it'll involve. Whether it'll be a story campaign, a slash and chase, you know, sort of in the same vein as games like Dead by Daylight, where you basically either play the killer or the victim depending on your own like personal pre preference or whether it'll be a, com a campaign or both maybe there'll be two modes like where there's a story and um, a casual play as well where you can play online I assume they'll probably do that I hope they do it's one thing that I thought was a little bit of a flaw with the Evil Dead game great game um, love the um, mechanics and everything and the characters and the skins the location the settings you know in the cabin and around the cabin sort of liking to the film. I love the game as a whole. It's just I was a bit disappointed because it didn't have a campaign. Hopefully with that they'll introduce um, a campaign as a DLC later on. I'm hoping anyway because, I, I don't know, I played a lot of Dead by Daylight a few years ago and I just feel now I need like a, st a, a cool game where you get to be a killer but it's got a, camp a story. I mean before the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game was actually released I had an idea and I don't think they'll go quite this far but I thought it, as a fan of the film as it's one of my favourite movies I thought it would be amazing if they actually did a game where it's sandbox open world with a Texas Chainsaw Massacre skin and you're Leatherface and you have to build him up you know sort of like Grand Theft Auto or Red Dead 2 but with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre so it's all open world you interact with characters you get missions it's got a new story you know lots of different plots um, not plot holes lots of different plot points and you can build Leatherface up and add to his attributes and get different weapons and whatnot and um, customize his face like in the film as, as you know he cuts people's faces off and wears them so you could every different victim you had you could collect their faces and then keep them as a collection in the game and then wear them i thought something like what i've just said would be an amazing idea for a game but i don't think they'll go quite that far it'll probably either just be a stalk and slash where you kill her or the victim or it'll be basically a campaign or maybe both hopefully both i mean even playing the films would be great basically the same plot as the film i mean on the trailer it's got the characters from the original film in it from the 1974 film it's got nubbins in it it's got drayton sawyer i don't know if you can actually be those characters but the, it looks amazing the graphics look really good as well and i'm really pumped for that very excited can't wait to see what it brings um i'll talk a little bit more about it because i pulled up some articles yeah like i said anyway welcome to the sort of podcast that i'm going to start doing i'm on my own so it's going to be like a one-man band type of podcast. Uh, whether you find that thing boring or not, I may try and get somebody to do it with me like eventually so I can actually have some banter and go back and forth a little bit. But I've got my trusty iPhone with me, so I can actually, which I need because I'd be, I'd be a bit lost for words if I didn't have um, some information to go off. I did the first bit off the top of my head, but I'm actually looking at an article now on Jimatsu, is it Jimatsu.com? I may have pronounced that wrong. And I'm just reading about Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. It just talks about the trailer, basically. Um, from what I can see, it's released on all formats. 
so PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X, um, PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC via Steam, of course. So in 2023, the publisher is Gun Interactive, developer Sumo Nottingham. So it says, um, it'll also be available via the game, uh, the, sorry, the, I'm new to this, so do bear with me. The X, it'll be available via the Xbox Game Pass. Um, yeah, the screenshots look great. I've, I watched the advert yesterday, and like I said, it, the colours look amazing. I'm just looking at an image at, at the moment on that website of a broken down vehicle. It's got somebody hiding and an old trailer. Then you've got the house, which looks very authentic. Creepy living room. Yeah, it was a great trailer, and I'm pumped to see see what comes of it. I just I don't think they'll do the idea that I said that like a sandbox open world game sort of like into GTA or Red Dead. That'd be amazing with customization. But I'm sure it'll have a little customization and things. But yeah, and apparently it's an asymmetrical horror. Uh, so asymmetrical I was a bit unsure about that I'm sorry I'm a bit stupid but asymmetrical horror is usually 1v4 apparently with 4 survivors and a killer so it looks like it is going to be like Dead by Daylight and Evil Dead the game and Friday the 13th the game so I'm slightly disappointed if they're not going to have a campaign I will get the game and I'll probably love it as well because I do enjoy these supposed asymmetrical horrors as it's put but uh, it's a bit disappointed. I waffled on for ages about that, hoping it'd have a campaign. It looks like it is just going to be a stalk and slash. But it's out in 2023. No, um, no official release date. Just the year has been announced. So yeah. Um, if you listen to this at all, do leave comments um, about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the game. What you thought of the reveal trailer, and if you're looking forward to it and whatnot. Because I really, it look, it does look really authentic. I must say, it does look good. Um, yeah, so welcome to the little podcast. I'll probably go for about half an hour or something. Basically, I'm just going to cover, it's a Skim Crawlers media podcast for the um, YouTube channel. And I'm just going to cover all things horror, really. I'm going to have news. I'm going to look at some articles. I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, current horror topics whether it's new releases on physical media or new theatrical releases or maybe do some reviews i think i'm going to do like a little review portion at the end but what i shall do as an aid is pull up my letterbox and look at because sometimes it's, i watch that many movies i don't know if anyone does themselves that it's hard to keep count and remember everything sometimes like obviously i remember things and what i watch but to talk about it like this i'm gonna to have to use letterboxd and i'll probably and talk about it a little bit and give it a review or, or somewhat so i'll probably i think i've watched how many films have i watched this week well the last week so i'll do it sunday monday to sunday so i have watched a lot i'm just looking now and i believe i've watched so one two uh, not too many this week, not as much as the week before, but I watched nine last week, and that's from last Monday to until yesterday. So nine movies, so it's more than one a day. Um, normally, sometimes I go for about 20, if possible. I'm a bit behind this year because I've been doing other things, and there's been other things going on. So, so far this year, I've managed um, 176, but I'm hoping to get some more in because I, I just love watching movies. I don't watch a lot of TV shows. I do watch them. And there's some I really need to get to, but um, Westworld being one of them, I've seen bits of it, but I'm looking forward to seeing the whole thing. I've just picked it up a few weeks ago on Blu-ray, like all three seasons, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, watched a couple of films yesterday. Uh, a couple I wasn't that keen on, actually, but I'll, I'll give them sort of a review at the end. I watched Haxon for the first time, the um, silent movie from 1922, and I thought that was brilliant really cool about witchcraft so it's hacks and translated to the witch but yes um i did enjoy that and i'm going to give a little review of that at the end of the 
at the end of the session. So there is other, so what I'm going to do now is just chill back and talk a little bit about some current topics. So I do need to pull up some news articles because I didn't prepare. I just I'm just doing this off the cuff, like you know, just. I think I'm going to check out Bloody Disgusting, see what they've got on there, because I've not looked for a while. Let's have a look. They have an article, Freddy's Nightmares ranking all 44 episodes. I've not even seen all of that show. I've seen some episodes. I've seen, obviously, the first one, which actually has Robert England in it, and it is a Freddy story, but it's an anthology, and it has all different stories, you know, kind of like Tales from the Dark Side. There's an article here that looks interesting, which I might go over. 11 brand new original horror movies releasing this week. So this will be on um, streaming and you'll be able to get them off places like iTunes and Google Play Store or wherever you get... I mean, I've got iPhones, so I use iTunes to get my movies if I download them. Oh, of course, you can pirate it if you want to be a pirate. Arr. Well... That was bad. <laughs> but if you want to be a pirate, you can always pirate them. Um, oh, yeah, I've heard of this one. Blumhouse's The um, Black Phone is released this week. And let me just get the article. Because I'm really interested to see what's coming out. Because I've, I've not looked for a while. And doing this podcast, I can do things like this. I can talk about upcoming releases. I know what's coming out sort of on physical media over the next sort of month. Um one of the things actually released today in the UK, I know it's already released in the US, but in the UK, um, Ty West's X is released on Blu-ray, and I've actually ordered that. I have seen it. I thought it was great, and I've ordered that on Blu-ray, and that's actually out today on Blu-ray. You can get it off Amazon. I think it's about thirteen ninety nine, which is a fair price for a new movie, and it's a good one. So, I'm looking at this bloody disgusting article, and... This is what's released this week's. First up, writer-director Jeff Seaman's horror film Terror Tips is now available on VOD outlets from Mutiny Pictures, starring Hannah Fireman from the original VHS. I'm sure I'd know who that was if I actually watched VHS again. I can't really remember. I don't know the actress, though, by name. Hmm. Doesn't say much about it on here actually. I'm just not gonna. Yeah, Terror Tips apparently is that out. Um, and here's another one the for another film called Azuli, I believe it's pronounced. I could be wrong. Azuli or E E Azuli, Azuli. I think it is. And the synopsis, the little synopsis that it has says, A swamp mermaid comes up from the depths in new indie horror movie, Azuli, released on VOD outlets today. And they've put, We could always use more mermaid horror. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, I've never watched The Lure, or The Law. The Lure, I think it's called, which is, I've got the criteria on release of that on Blu-ray, never watched it, but it does look interesting. It's a Polish musical, that one. Um, yeah, I suppose you could do with more Mermaid Horrors. The Nanny's Night, which I actually nearly watched online the other day. So that's also out this week. Don't really know what that involves. Just says genre outfit, Devil Works, releases The Nanny's Night. A teen horror movie from artistic films and panic in frames that was written and directed by Ignacio Lopez The Nanny's Night tells the story of the coolest babysitter in town who is revealed to be a member of a malevolent satanic sect that sounds quite good sounds a little bit like The Babysitter obviously The Nanny Nanny's Night The Babysitter which is a good movie but you know a lot of these I mean I love something original you know more than anything I love something original or an original idea but being such a, ha a fan of horror it's great to have nostalgic things like see um, legacy sequels and prequels and things I mean I'm all for that but overall I like a new story but it's okay when films are similar like you know as long as they're fun and have their own spin on it that's okay because we've got to the point now where near enough pretty much everything's been done so it's come up with a complete, n completely new concept you've got to be like extra creative um, what else is coming out? 
says here the final new horror release for Tuesday, June 14th is Shadow of the Cat from Indican Pictures, a supernatural mystery starring Danny Trejo and directed by Jose Maria Sil Sicala. Uh, in the film, Gato lives with his teenage daughter Emma and a small group of people on an isolated farm without telephones or the internet. But Emma is tempted by curiosity, r runs away into town one day to attend a carnival and gets her hands on a mobile phone. After she uploads a video of herself to the internet, she is contacted by a mysterious woman named Celia, who claims to be a long-lost mother. What follows is a mystical tale of family identity and broken trust set amidst the turmoil of one girl's question about her past. It sounds okay. Ah, it's also got, um, I believe, yeah, it's talking about Mad God as well, which I watched on um, Thursday. So, yeah, I might talk about Mad God for a bit, actually. So that's one that got um, released onto Shudder, streaming on Shudder from Thursday. So it's on there now um, in the UK, US, Canada, you know, all the places you can get Shudder. And very visually impressive film. Um, it basically doesn't really have a story. I mean, you can kind of make a story out of it, and I'll talk a little, since we're going to talk about this film, I'll actually talk about what I interpreted as the story from it. There goes the dog again. Be quiet. Leave it. Leave it. Yeah, well, it adds to the... adds to the um, ambiance, a bit of dog barking. So we have Mad God. It's Phil... What's his name? Phil Tippett. He did the um, puppeteering for films like Jurassic Park and um, what else did he do? I think he worked on E.T. as well. I'll try and see what... I know he worked on Jurassic Park. This is his 30-year passion project, so it's all done with stop motion. Stop motion, sorry. Stop motion animation. It's claymation. It looks utterly fantastic. That's the best thing about it is the vi it's very visually stimulating. It's gross as well. It's absolutely gross. There's some really gross stuff in it. Like there's these sort of it's on this planet, and there's all these different creatures and this um, hunter lands there, and he's trying to recover a stone, I believe it was, or something, some sort of like stone that does something, which is normally the case when these hunters land on planets. Can you leave it? Which is normally the case when they land on the planet. And it's got this gross, like, mechanism. You'll have to see... To be fair, you have to see it for yourself. And basically, this creatures... These creatures are being made, and they're sort of... They're pooing, if you will. Not to sound too gross. And it's going through this whole cycle and being recycled. It's certainly fantastic. There's some really gross stuff, like, um... You know, these sort of, like, worm babies being, um abstracted from somebody who's in like a dingy hospital in like a dingy hospital bed in this world and people are watching it and clapping like these people you don't actually see the people who are clapping it's got like a shadow of them and they're watching it they're watching and um, people be tortured and everything it's got a lot of torture in it it's very gruesome it's got the whole poo mechanism thing that i was talking about poo recycling excrement recycling and you, it's really gross but it's amazing um I thought it was... I really was impressed by it. And that's from Phil Tippett, Tippett, who did puppets for Jurassic Park. And it's his 30-year passion project, so he's been working on it on and off for 30 years or so, and I'm not surprised. It's 83 minutes long. Um, I'll read the synopsis in a moment. Now, I didn't give it the highest rating. If I watched it again... And it's, I'd probably rate it a little bit higher, but I gave it a three star on Letterboxd, so I gave it three out of five. And um, that's because of the lack of story. But you can interpret a story. I'm not going to give anything away, so I'm not going to talk too much about what happens in the film anymore. But I sort of interpreted it as like... The whole world within the film is a mechanism that um, creates life on this other planet that basically goes through all this process of the killing and the torture 
and the recycling of excrement of course and then it creates you know it creates life on this other planet that's the kind of interpretation i got but other than that it's barely got any dialogue if any i don't think it has any dialogue it has some mumbling and groaning and things there's also this bit with a at the beginning with a great creature that comes out this like strange looking monstrosity comes out of this like decrepit hotel with like a butcher's blade and tries to go to town on the hunter but he obviously stays um hidden and ends up cutting this like little worm man who lives in a tube yeah but yeah that's the um mad god so i did watch that that's on shudder now streaming on shudder i also watch not sure how you pronounce it but a gaspar noe film i watched it on the arrow player it has been released on blu-ray but I watched, um, is it Lux Eterna or Luz or Lu or uh, it's French. I'm not very good at French. So I'm just going to call it Lux Eterna or Le. It'd be Le, won't it? Le Eterna, which is basically a documenting this film that's been made about witchcraft, like this kind of modern, like, um, film that covers um, has a modern spin on the burning at the um, stake and it's got these women it basically just covers the actresses interacting it's actually i thought it was a fairly good film for what it was it's very short at 51 minutes and i also gave that a three out of five if you're just wondering i'm just looking through letterboxd and talking about some of it i watched like me as well which is on um shudder i'll read the synopsis so like me after Posting a video of herself robbing a convenience store, Kaya amasses a huge social media following. She seeks some form of genuine human connection through her travels. She encounters a drifter, an internet troll and a paint-huffing outsider who are all pulled into her circle of chaos, junk food and drugs. So it's basically about this um, streamer who's going around committing these different crimes. Um, at the beginning, she holds up a convenience store and makes this guy go crazy, like the clerk or the attendant, whoever you want, whatever you want to say, who works in a convenience store, ends up peeing himself and everything because she points a gun with a silencer at him. And he just... Yeah, he just pees himself and she does it to humiliate him and posts it online. I didn't think much to the film, actually. It's You could kind of say it's similar to the film Spree, but I thought Spree was a better movie and has a bit more going for it. It's also a bit newer as well. This this film's a bit old. It's from 2017. I gave that a one and a half out of five because I, I weren't impressed. Um, I won't go on too much longer. I did watch Haxon. Very impressive. It's basically a silent film that covers witchcraft throughout the ages. It's very old. It's 100 years old, in fact, this year. It's from 1922, and that's Haxon. So I watched the Criterion release. So if you've not seen Haxon, go out and have your way to watch it. It is on YouTube, I believe. It's 105 minutes long. Very impressive movie. It's all silent. So it goes through the history of witchcraft and has captions that come up, as of, which is obvious with a silent film. So you're going to have to do a lot of reading. But the some of the imagery is amazing and the different, um, you know, like the footage they got for it. And they show like a mechanical depiction of hell on there, a medieval depiction, which is just amazing. Um, talking about it doesn't do it much justice. It's a fantastic film. And I gave that a four and a half star out of five just because i thought it was i thought it was really insightful and very visually stimulating great movie i'm not going to cover all the films that i've watched but i have uh, another film i watched in the week i believe i watched it when did i watch it wednesday night i watched for the first time 1982's the dorm that dripped blood and i was very impressed by it really enjoyed it it's directed by stephen carpenter and jeffrey obro 88 minutes long. I'll read the synopsis on Letterboxd because it's quite short, so I might as well fill a bit of air. Is when the kidding stops, the killing starts. A crazed killer stalks college students who gave up their vacation to clean a deserted dormitory. So, yeah, it's in there. And then they're left there to clean up this dormitory, and somebody's killing people like they assume it's this crazy guy who's in one of the rooms who they barely see but it's got a twist to it and you do it's got a bit of a 
twisty reveal to who the uh, murderer is but it's very good and the killing's quite graphic in it as well i really enjoyed it i've been waiting a long time to see this but i was a bit i was a little on the fence about buying it but i ended up thinking you know what i've got a little bit of spare change i'm going to pick up the synapse region a actually it's not even re the synapse edition which is all region so if you've got a not got a region free player you can't you know you can play the dawn that drip blood from synapse you can just play it on any player because it's regions a b and c so you're pretty much covered there but yeah very impressed by that great slasher movie a bit of a bit of an um hidden gem a bit of a lesser spoken about slasher film you know you got your freddy movies and your jasons friday the 13th that always gets spoke about and scream and um, halloween of course and but this one's a little and happy birthday to me is one that comes up quite a bit which is also pretty good and not the most not the most spoke about one but yeah i thought the done that drip blood was really impressive and what else did i watch Watch, watch Laid to Rest which is another slasher film about a killer and I thought that was great mainly for the gore it's one of them films you just watch like if you're a horror fan you're just kind of rooting for the killer because the characters are quite dispen dispendable and you're just waiting for the killer to dispatch them and special effects were amazing I thought it was great so watch Laid to Rest and I gave that a three and a half star out of five just because I was so impressed by the gore and the story's actually not too bad it's fairly good I mean he's basically trying to it's this girl who's escaped from him he goes around like killing different a girl from each state in the USA and um, one of them escapes she's been placed into an um, casket and she escapes and he's hunting her down and she comes across it. she befriends these people who are trying to help her like this young guy and an older guy and they're just trying to get away from this menacing killer and um, he's no Jason or anything like that but you know he's quite a quite a formidable opponent for them and he, you know the kills are brutal so i did enjoy laid to rest i've also got chrome school laid to rest too which i need to get on yeah really looking forward to seeing that and that's about it really that's about all i've watched this week um there is a few more bit i watched the righteous which i don't even want to talk about i thought it was quite boring it's just been it's getting released from arrow video I watched it on the player. Didn't think much to that at all. So some of them type of films are like hit or miss. They're either like really good or they're that it's kind of one of these artful like films that are very um open ended and it's down to your interpretation and sometimes it's a bit hit or miss. Sometimes they really hit the mark, but I thought the righteous was quite um dull personally. I mean it might be somebody's cup of tea, but it's definitely not mine. It's from Mark O'Brien. It's a 2021 film, 97 minutes. I'll read the synopsis on Letterboxd. A burdened man feels the wrath of a vengeful god after he and his wife are visited by a mysterious stra stranger. Sounds a lot better than it is, in my opinion. That's just my opinion, mind you. And I did probably get... I need to watch that again, because maybe I'll get something else from it if I watch it again sometime, but I'm in no rush. I gave it one and a half out of five, so that's very low, but that being just my opinion and that's about all i watched in the week i watched the animated film yesterday um mortal kombat legend scorpion's revenge got the blu-ray really cheap so i thought i'd watch that the animation's great it's gory as hell like you'd expect from a mortal kombat adaptation you know like the video games you know it's got like the brutal kills and everything it's great really for what it was i gave that three and a half out of five it's a tale about scorpion as you can tell by the title scorpion's revenge pretty good stuff so if you're a Mortal Kombat fan and you haven't seen Scorpion's Revenge pick it up there's another one The Battle for the Realms that's been released as well a Mortal Kombat movie and that is about all I'm just looking through Letterboxd as I said I'll be useless without these tools and I'm just looking through and seeing what I've watched so if you did happen to listen to this which you probably haven't if you're do come onto the channel at all um any of the topics i've spoken about like texas chainsaw massacre the game or um the movies that i've watched this week do comment and put what you've watched or your opinion on for example mad god because i was quite impressed by that especially visually visually stunning well i say stunning visually grotesque 
and yeah do leave comments on the videos on the channel uh, i know that the channel's getting going a little bit it's not very interesting at the minute i'm trying new things this is why i wanted to do a little bit of audio for today um i will do another one of these talking about different topics you know just a chill a really chilled podcast it's a one-man band so it's just me doing it I have got my trusty iPhone, like I said, and I'm pulling up articles. So I do read synopsis and things and see what I can cover. So I'm just using my iPhone as an aid. Um, sorry, I'm just flicking through. Okay, that's just a ad for something else that's not relevant, really. Um, I might start doing topics. I might prepare the podcast better in the future because I've not prepared this at all I'm just waffling on and going off the top of my head um, yeah so enjoy whatever films you're watching this week do leave comments on the videos I'm super excited for the Arrow reveals on Friday because it's the last Friday of the month Arrow video always um, have their reveals which they reveal on their store um, and on Twitter I normally follow it on Twitter I actually haven't got a Twitter account, but you can still look. I normally chill on a Friday afternoon if I can and see what Arrow are releasing, see if I'm going to pre-order anything. It's been a bit hit or my miss. They've done some okay things the past couple of months. Like They released the Wild Things 4K limited edition set and Blu-ray, which I didn't pick up because I didn't think the film was worth up, upgrading to 4K because I've just got a standard Blu-ray, which I'm happy with. But it was a good release because I don't think it's had a release in the UK before on blu-ray so to get a 4k limited edition set or a blu-ray of wild things is pretty pretty cool i just didn't pick it up i may get it when it's cheaper or if they bring out a standalone 4k i might get it in a sale or something but that was a good release um they've released what's it called the anthony perkins film the edge of sanity which i've which come out today which i've actually managed to order I didn't know if I was going to get that one yet, but I thought, you know what, I'll just spend the £18 and get it. So they've been quite interesting in the past few months. They released the Candyman 4K. I didn't get it because I've got the Blu-ray limited edition and I didn't feel like upgrading. I didn't feel like spending a £30 because, as you know, if you're a collector, there's so many different movies to pick up that are being released and there's a lot of great labels that are putting stuff out at the moment, especially the boutiques and... It's quite hard to keep up, so maybe if the, maybe in the future I'll pick up the Candyman 4K. A couple of months ago they did American Werewolf, the 4K set. I had the limited edition from a couple of years ago when it came out on the same day as Nightbreed, and I was so thrilled that day. I think it was in 2019 in October, they released American Werewolf in London on Blu-ray, limited edition set, and they also released Nightbreed. And Nightbreed was making its UK Blu-ray debut, and I, I I got both the sets on the same day, and I was so thrilled. I didn't want to kind of tarnish that and just pick up the 4K for the sake of it and sell my set, but I might get the 4K eventually, like as a standalone release. So I may cover Arrow on Friday. I may do a little like theme to the next sort of podcast I do I might talk about the new Arrow releases what I'm excited for what I'm not excited for there can be a bit hit or miss at the minute some of the stuff's interesting some not so much this is the reveals for their September releases I believe so I'm quite looking forward to it I'm sure they'll have a couple of things that are extremely interesting um, in there yeah uh, my laptop's running out of battery now because i forgot to charge it up so i'm going to leave it there i think i've gone on long enough i've covered you know texas chainsaw massacre the game and my thoughts on that and um, i spoke done some mini reviews if you will talked a little bit about mad god which is yeah you need to go and watch mad god on shudder if you have access to shudder or you can pirate it have a look at it because it is something else visually it's not the most interesting film in the world because it doesn't really have a specific plot.